Hello and welcome to this Medic Mind tutorial where today we're going to be focusing on the obesity crisis in the UK. Now this forms part of a series of videos looking at NHS hot topics with the intention of helping you smash that MMI medical interview that you might have coming up. Okay, so before we get started today, pause the video now and have a think to yourself about the current obesity crisis in the UK. What do you know and what would you like to know? Okay, let's go through some of the facts and figures together then. So one in four adults are currently obese, and that's a massive proportion. In addition, 65% are overweight, so you can already see that obesity has a widespread impact on the NHS. As a result, in 2011, the government aimed at introducing some policies to tackle obesity, at least in part by 2020, and that included giving advice to the public about healthier diets and exercise regimes that they could take. So, why is the government introducing these policies, and what are the dangers of obesity? Well first, obesity is linked to diabetes. It's also linked to a higher blood pressure, and also some forms of cancer. So you can see that these three things contribute a lot of the mortality and morbidity associated with obesity. Looking at more specific conditions, obesity is linked to arthritis, particularly of the knee joints because of the increased weight that those joints have to support. There's also an increased risk of stroke because the blood is more likely to clot in obese patients. And finally, there's the overall cost associated with obesity. Even if you take a simple operation in the NHS, obese patients have to have larger beds, more staff to move them around, and actually have longer operation times. So as a result of all of those dangers, the government wanted to introduce a sugar tax, or what's called a soft drinks industry levy. Now here are some useful facts. The first is that this levy was immediately supported by evidence. So this isn't just a whimsical policy, it's supported by evidence, and that evidence is of a high quality. So in 2013, the BMJ ran a study that said that actually introducing a 20% tax on soft sugary drinks would reduce obesity in the UK by 1.3%. Now that's a massive amount, even though it might sound a little small. Second, we know that international taxes work. So in Mexico in 2014, a soft drinks tax was introduced much like the UK's. As a result, soft drink consumption fell by 12%. And that's a massive benefit for the government and health industries because that is associated with a reduced instance of obesity. And third, you can even consider the impact on tooth decay. So tooth decay is caused by bacteria growing and thriving off the sugars present in drinks. And those bacteria produce acid, which then decays the tooth. Now in the UK, that contributes 3.4 billion pounds worth of damage. If we can reduce that by introducing a sugar tax, then actually that has a lot of economic benefits too. Now you may be aware that Boris Johnson recently unveiled a new 2020 strategy looking at tackling obesity and this was 10 million pounds worth of investment going into this strategy. These are the key things that you need to know. The first that it was motivated by COVID-19 risk. So actually it was found that patients with COVID-19 were more likely to die or be seriously harmed by coronavirus if it, they were comorbidly obese. And as a result, it was decided that it was time to tackle obesity in the UK. As a result, the government introduced a much stronger advertising campaign, encouraging people to make healthier choices. There was also a new app that was launched, and this ran over 12 weeks to help people lose weight and become more healthy by encouraging them about new food types and food types that might be healthier to choose from from their existing diets. And finally, the government ran a partnership with companies such as Slim World and Weight Watchers to help encourage people to move into losing weight. Now you might ask yourself the question, is it fair for private profit-making companies such as these to benefit from strategies in the NHS? But that's a whole other NHS ethics lesson altogether. Okay, let's run through an MMI station together then. So you can see here that we're asked the question, what can you see on the data here? Now pause the video now and feel free to have a look at this data chart and this infographic and pick out key things that you would like to mention. Now a good answer would be picking out key figures, but more importantly, would take into account that purple banner at the top, which explains the policy very clearly. So it's important that you let that guide your thinking. Now a key to these charts are actually the biggest figures are probably the most important. So you can see on the left that we've got some industry figures about what proportion of the market is soft drinks. That tells you a bit about the scale of this operation that the government's proposing and the scale of the impact of the sugar tax. 
on the bottom right, you can see more individual sort of uh, facts and figures to help the layman understand. So you can see that obese patients are seven times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes compared to non-obese patients. That's a really important point and a real important motivator behind the sugar tax. You can also bring in what you already know about the sugar tax. So all of those facts and figures, all of those risk factors such as arthritis, stroke and the overall cost of obesity in the UK, you can equally bring in here. And you can mention that the sugar tax is in keeping with the government's ongoing strategy, which is reiterated in 2020 as a result of the coronavirus crisis. You might also give some opinions on the sugar tax. For example, you could bring in the international case study by Mexico in 2014, which we've already discussed, and reduce soft drinks consumption by 12%. Second, you could mention that the increased funding that is brought around by taxing people, where does that money go? Well, it can be put straight back into tackling obesity and treating obese patients. So it's actually a double-edged sword in terms of benefiting the NHS. Third, you've got less money spent on treatments. So all of those health conditions, the diabetes, the cancer, the arthritis, the stroke, all of those will be reduced if you tackle obesity. Fourth, you could argue that the government has an ethical responsibility to care for its citizens, and part of that is by recommending that they lose weight. Fifth, reducing obesity as a whole is obviously a beneficial thing, and it has massive impacts across society. Even on individual self-esteem, reducing obesity can be a massive benefit. The cons of the sugar tax, which we haven't yet discussed really, would be that it could it have a lasting impact? We don't exactly know the long-term impact of these taxes. Will consumers simply just reset at a later point and you'll get increasing amount of sugar consumption again in the future? We don't fully know. The major disadvantage of the sugar tax and one which is constantly being talked about in terms of politics is the socio-economic inequality that it creates. We know that people of a lower socio-economic background are more likely to consume soft drinks and soft sugary drinks. By introducing an extra tax on that population, you could argue that it increases inequality because now those people are going to have less disposable income if they can't change their diets. But it could be argued that instead of punishing unhealthy eating, it would be better to encourage healthy eating. So this con is more about not per se tackling obesity, but more the way the policies are being generated in general. Fourth, you've got an issue with ethical arguments. So again, governments should not be paternalistic. So even though you could argue that governments have a responsibility to help citizens' health, arguably governments also have a responsibility to let people live their lives. And actually by dictating to the public what they should and shouldn't be drinking, by charging them certain amounts, you could argue that that's beyond the scope of the government. There are also other causes of obesity. So even though this is focusing on sugar and sugar in soft drinks, don't forget that actually fatty foods and other food types are actually also causes of obesity. Likewise, not doing enough exercise can be a massive cause of obesity in this country, where actually jobs are largely sedentary. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Here are our key learning points for today. The first was that we discussed the obesity crisis. Remember that one in four patients are obese and 65% are overweight. That's a massive proportion. Second, we talked through some anti-obesity strategies, such as the sugar tax and the pros and cons for that sugar tax. And that comes into our third objective, where we really dug deep on what that sugar tax meant. We looked at international case studies and we looked at the pros and cons, particularly the socioeconomic disadvantages that a sugar tax could impose. Do you have an interview for medicine, dentistry or veterinary school? The interview is the final hurdle of your application, but also the most competitive. Are you nervous about your interview or unsure where to start preparation? Here's where we can help. With a few clicks, you'll get access to 100 Medic Mind video tutorials covering 10 hours of theory, 150 MMI stations, live weekly webinars and more. You'll get a breakdown of all the topics interviews typically cover and real-life MMI stations. Our award-winning interview course is trusted by over 12,000 students in over 37 countries and has been written by official medical school examiners. So, what are you waiting for? Get started on our course today.